Hey, you. Yeah, you. Behind the screen. Looking at me. This isn't a bedroom. This isn't real. This is a prison. You gotta help me. You gotta help me. You gotta help me, please. Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite authors, Philip K. Dick. So, I work at a bookstore, yeah? And naturally, people come in asking for recommendations. And there's one particular author I like to recommend to a wide variety of readers with a range of tastes. Including those readers who are psyched about the drug-induced and paranoid-filled uh, writings of Hunter S. Thompson and William S. Burroughs. As well as those readers who love the metafiction and philosophical ponderings of writers like Thomas Pynchon or Don DeLillo. Or to those uh, people who have become enamored with uh, the shifting realities and surreal moments of writers like Haruki Murakami, or George Saunders. And to this wide uh, swath of literary tastes, I like to recommend one author. Uh, and that author is none other than Philip K. Dick. And quite possibly, maybe even 90% of the time, I get asked to give another recommendation. People don't want to read books with covers like these. They're not edgy like... Uh, the covers of William S. Burroughs or Hunter S. Thompson. Uh, they're not sleek and trendy like the smooth covers of Murakami's books. And it's hard to believe that an author with covers like these would have the same academic standing as authors like DeLillo or Pynchon. And so I recommend something else, and that's completely fine. Because Philip K. Dick is not an author who's recommended. He's found. He's discovered beneath the clunky writing style, the pulpy plots, the ridiculous character names, as a talented writer who's experimenting with forms, plots, and ideas that were so revolutionary at the time, uh, they've been overdone and rehashed to the point now that they're just cliche. Whoa, I imagine you're thinking, I gotta check this guy out. And most likely you've interacted with Philip K. Dick more than you think. Uh, so many of his books have been adapted into Hollywood films, including Blade Runner, but also Total Recall, um, A Scanner Darkly, and Minority Report, just to name a few. Most recently, his most famous book, uh, The Man in the High Castle, has been adapted into a television series. But you shouldn't judge Dick's work on these adaptations because they are completely stripped bare of what makes uh, Philip K. Dick's work so great. So let's talk about the books. Where do you start and what makes them so great? So the question of where to start is a difficult one because Philip K. Dick was an insanely prolific writer. He wrote around 44 novels and 121 published short stories. He published four novels in 1964 alone. Part of the Philip K. Dick mythology is that uh, he was so prolific due to drug experimentation and an addiction to amphetamines, which is something that comes up in his books all the time, characters getting lost in shared hallucinations or ruining their lives from drug abuse. And I mean, if you're cranking out four books in a year, I'm not surprised you're taking performance enhancing drugs. So while I haven't read every single Philip K. Dick book, I have read a lot. Here is my collection of Philip K. Dick books. He's one of my most owned authors, and I'd recommend starting with one of the most obvious choices, and that is do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? This was famously made into the film Blade Runner, and it fall, it's essentially a private detective bounty hunter story set on a depopulated Earth where most of humanity has moved to other planets like Mars, and this bounty hunter, Rick Deckard, is on this mission to hunt down three or four rogue androids who look exactly like humans. So if you've seen Blade Runner, I'd still recommend reading this because they are quite different. I was once in a used bookstore when this uh, bearded man with a tie-dye t-shirt uh, came up to me and explained to me the difference between the book and the film. And basically the difference was that in the film, you're always concerned about if, if Rick Deckard, Harrison Ford's character, is he a human or is he a robot? The whole book, the whole sh movie is about that kind of mystery. Uh, whereas that question isn't as important in the book. In the book, it's not about whether Rick is uh, a human or a robot. What Rick is trying to show is that such distinctions are meaningless. Um, a being is a being, whether human or artificial. 
And so then I thanked the uh, the man for his wonderful insight, and I walked out into the streets and never saw him again. And that's one thing about reading Philip K. Dick. It gets you into out-of-the-ordinary discussions with random people you've never met before. If you like the fast-paced and pulpy plotting of Electric Sheep, I'd highly recommend following it up with Ubik. Uh, Ubik is quite possibly my favorite Philip K. Dick, and it's the only one of his books to be on the time top 100 novels of the 20th century. The plot of this book is absolutely bonkers, and I don't even really know where to begin explaining it. It starts out with all of these farcical moments, but then slowly turns into this dark existential nightmare. One of the most famous bits in it early on is a, uh, is a character stuck in his house because everything in this world is coin operated. And so he has no money. And so he can't walk out of his house because the door requires 25 cents or something. <laughs> and so he's just stuck in his house. And then the door starts threatening to sue him because he can't pay him. And it's just completely absurd, but you know, so much fun. As another random dude once explained to me at a party, more than any of Dick's books, Ubik perfectly captures both the hack writer within Dick as well as the genius. But if those two books seemed a bit too pulpy, uh, another great place to start is The Man in the High Castle. And this is the only book of Philip K. Dick's uh, to win the Hugo Award, which is the biggest award in science fiction. It has the famous premise of what if uh, the Nazis won World War II and the United States was split uh, with the Nazis occupying the East Coast and the Japanese occupying the West Coast. Since the book's publication in 1962, we've seen this premise play out again and again. Two examples that immediately come to mind are Philip Roth's The Plot Against America and Robert Harris's Fatherland. But unlike either of those two books, this book isn't the thriller that you think it is. There is no underground rebellion that you follow. It's just about people's daily lives in this alternate reality. Uh, waking up, going to work, feeling sad, getting divorced. It's what life would be like if you lived in a defeated nation, which I imagine for Americans in American culture is uh, a really foreign concept. But then there's also a twist to this tale, something, you know, very Philip K. Dickian. And that is within this alternative world, uh, there is a writer living in Denver, and he's written a best-selling underground book, which is all about this, which is a depiction of this alternative reality where the Allies won. And as you read The Man in the High Castle, it suddenly dawns on you that what the characters are doing in the, in the book are exactly what we're doing. Just as we're reading an alternative reality within our own reality, so are they. As the characters are reading what it's like if the Allies win the, win the war, we're reading about what it's like when the Axis win the war. And suddenly, look at just what happened. I just said we're reading an alternative reality within our own reality. Our own reality? <laughs> what does that mean? That expression implies that there are multiple realities, that this reality is not our own, which may be true or not true, but suddenly, you know, the words on the page of this book are sort of affecting the entire fabric of my existence outside of it. Suddenly I'm looking at everything twice. Nothing is as it seems. Paranoia is fueling my thoughts. And this feeling is a feeling that Philip K. Dick summons again and again. Reading Philip K. Dick becomes an almost physical experience as he pulls out the rug of reality in his fiction that then sort of spills out into the fabric of our own. It's this feeling that I was trying to emulate at the beginning of this video, because that was just an example. Finally, one last recommend is Philip K. Dick's novel, A Scanner Darkly. Uh, I would go so far as to say this is one of his finest novels, if not the finest. Uh, I find it, it's not my favorite of his novels. It's harder to love than something like Ubik or Electric Sheep, but the plotting and craftsmanship, I think, is just magnificent here. Um, it's a really sad, dark story uh, about drug abuse and addiction, and it follows this undercover cop who, due to the drugs he's taking, uh, begins to unknowingly spy on himself. Uh, really well done. If I have still not convinced you to read any Philip K. Dick, let me just say that I think he is the master of the page-turning plot, an illustrator of the psychedelic paranoia of the 60s, 
and 70s, an avant experimenter in narrative forms, and a sci-fi prophet who was envisioning virtual reality far before anyone else. So guys, let me know if you've read any Philip K. Dick, what your thoughts are, whether you liked it, disliked it, or are planning to start. I really want to hear your thoughts, so please let me know down below. And if you like this video, please like it. And if you really like this video, please subscribe. Until next time, happy.